Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, welcome back to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend some here with me. It's that time of year when graduate and professional school applicants are thinking about what schools and what programs to apply to and when. The semester is over, the summer is nearing, the weather is getting warmer by the day, and the days are getting longer. We're getting more hours of sun in the day and we're feeling good. The semester is over and you deserve a pat on the back for a job well done, for all of that time, effort, and energy you've spent on trying your best throughout the semester, and now you're ready to think about what's next, and that's summer. Maybe you're working this summer, maybe you're going to be studying for and writing a standardized test, maybe some combination of these. If you're here with me, you're likely also starting to think about your applications to graduate and professional schools and what those applications will look like how much time you'll need to attribute to preparing those applications, and mapping out your deadlines to make sure that you stay on track. Well, you've come to the right place with the right person. By now, you already know my background and what brings me to this professional advancement, graduate, and professional school applications work with you. If you're new to the podcast, check out episodes one and two, especially for why I love helping applicants with their advancement and developing the skills that they need for their academic and professional advancement. So you know that I've been on both sides of the table, so to speak. I've been an applicant in many graduate and professional school applications processes. I've been a student in and graduated from highly competitive programs, and I've been on admissions committees and job search and promotion committees. Since 2015, I've also been coaching and strategizing with my clients to their admission to both Canadian and American graduate and professional schools and beyond. So you're probably wondering, what's my first step to developing my applications that are unique to me, professional, personal, refined, and polished. Well, aside from enrolling in our course called Mastering Academic Applications, which is launching this spring, your first step is to think about what you want, like what you actually want in life, personally and professionally. And we're talking about what you want, not what others may want for you. One of the most common but often not talked about issues is the pressure that you may feel from family and friends to apply to certain graduate programs and or follow a specific career path. This is often why applicants apply to a program that may not be well suited for them or in which they really have no interest, but they're trying to satisfy their parents or gain some sort of external validation from family and friends. I talked about internal and external validation in episode three, so check it out for more on that. When we're talking about other people's expectations, what we're talking about are other people's hopes and expectations of what you will accomplish, not based on who you are, but based on their own experience, opinions, goals, disappointments, and values. I see this all the time. Clients and students alike will come to me for advice and mentorship because they feel as though what other people in their lives want them to do is out of alignment with how they feel and what they want to do. And sometimes what that looks like is just this feeling that's intangible, almost indescribable, that just the next step that someone else wants you to take is wrong. It just doesn't feel right for you. It feels like someone else is putting the puzzle pieces together and you can't see how they're being put together. Those puzzle pieces are not being put together based on your choices, your goals, your values, your opinions, how you want to be spending your time, your energy, and your money. That intangible feeling may keep you up at night. It may give you stomach aches. It may give you anxiety. It may make you feel nervous and stressed because it's really difficult to pinpoint what is causing that feeling. 
And often what is causing that feeling is that what other people want for you and their expectations that are being imposed onto you, your life, your time, your efforts are out of alignment with what it is that you want to do. And it may be that you're not quite sure what it is that you want to do. Or it may be that you are sure you may just be afraid to voice it for fear of disappointing those other people. So, for example, you may be considering applying to law school simply because your parents expect you to become a lawyer. Ask yourself, are my parents lawyers? Why do my parents want me to be a lawyer? Why do I want to be a lawyer? Is this because I like watching legal shows on TV, Law and Order, maybe Suits? Or is it because I understand what lawyers do and I am interested in a particular area of law? Ask yourself, have I ever spent a day working at a law firm? Do I know any lawyers? What is actually comprised in the work? Do I want to spend much of my time in an office behind a computer? Do I want to spend much of my time representing clients at tribunals or in court? Do I want to spend much of my time working with other lawyers as well as law clerks and legal assistants? Do I want to deal with listening to other people's problems and providing advice and solutions to their problems? Do I know anything about one specific area of law? Will working as a lawyer allow me to have the work-life balance that I would like? These are all questions to ask yourself in determining what it is that is in alignment with you. You can also go back and do the visualization exercise with me in episode four. Doing this visualization exercise will help you to get a little bit clearer on what it is that you want and how to get there. Another example, your parents might really want you to apply to be a dentist. If this is you, ask yourself, why exactly do I want to be a dentist? Do I know any dentists? Do I want to work with patients who have dental problems on a daily basis? Do I want to look into and perform delicate and intricate work inside of my patient's mouths on a daily basis? Do I want to work with hygienists and dental assistants on a daily basis? Will working as a dentist allow me to have the work-life balance that I would like? Or maybe you want to become a professor or a researcher or any other number of things and you can ask yourself all of these questions when you're trying to decide what is in alignment with you and your goals. Now, it may be that you really do want to go to law school or medical school or dental school or graduate school, whatever it may be. However, it could also be that you have no interest in law or law school or that you have no interest in any of these other programs that other people expect you to apply to and complete. So you've got to be honest with yourself here. Are you applying to certain programs and certain schools to satisfy those around you, even if those around you are well-meaning, just so that you don't disappoint them? Now, I know people who have been in programs, not because they wanted to be in those programs, but because other people wanted them to be in those programs. Getting into programs is hard work. It's time, it's energy, it's money, it's your time day in, day out work that you're doing to get in. And then once you're in, more time, energy, money, and hard work in order to graduate. This is a ton of work and a ton of time in order to fulfill someone else's expectations. So it's crucial that you're applying to programs that you are actually interested in attending. Those people that I just mentioned who enrolled in programs, not because they wanted to, but because other people expected them to, they didn't enjoy what they were learning. They didn't enjoy what they were doing. And sometimes they either didn't finish the programs or they finished the programs and left the practice altogether once they were graduated and working professionally. Remember, this is your life. This is where you have to be true to yourself and your values. Remember, you will likely be spending several years in this program, plus additional time after graduation working to become licensed. Though well-meaning, your parents and your friends are not the ones who will be attending the program, and they are not the ones who will be going through the subsequent licensing process. It's going to be you. For example, in Ontario and other provinces, in order to become a lawyer, you would have to article at a law firm and write the bar exams in order to obtain your lawyer license. If you want to become a dentist, you'll have to successfully complete the board exams after dental school. 
whatever the program is, if you have to become licensed, there is another licensing process after your schooling. So you have to be sure about what it is that you want to do. If you are potentially interested in applying to any professional program, whether a master's degree, medical school, law school, or any others, it's essential that you take the time to figure out what you actually want to do. There's nothing wrong with being unsure. This is totally normal. After all, you haven't yet attended any of these graduate or professional programs. It's perfectly normal to be unsure about what programs and which schools to apply to. In Ontario alone, there are literally hundreds of graduate and professional programs offered by higher learning institutions, and websites and brochures only tell you so much. They provide information, but they cannot convey the daily student experience that you'll have, and they cannot convey and cannot predict what professional opportunities will become available to you and what your day-to-day work will look like once you graduate. You may be interested in law school, medical school, a master's or MBA program or a PhD program or another program altogether. And you may have read a fancy brochure, but otherwise you really have no idea which programs or schools you want to apply to and why. There are a number of things you can do in order to better inform yourself and arm yourself with the knowledge and tools to narrow down which schools and programs to apply to. First, you can contact the schools and programs that you're interested in and ask if you can sit in on one or more classes. This is a great option to become familiar with the school and its offerings. Not many applicants take up this option. For example, if you're interested in a specific law school, medical school, or a graduate program, contact the school and ask if there are any first-year or upper-year classes that you can attend, either in person or virtually, in order to give you a good idea as to what the classes have to offer, what student life looks like, and what a typical day would involve. Attending a day or two in person or virtually is a great way to see what your days might look like as a student in the program. Remember, this is a test run of a potential future daily reality. Wake up when you would be waking up, do the commute to the school if possible, and attend as many classes as possible. Turn off your phone and avoid distractions. Soak in your surroundings. While you're there, feel free to speak to other students and to faculty, visit the library and its study spaces, and ask the questions that are on your mind. You'll be surprised to know that many students and staff will likely be glad to answer your questions about their program. Second, speak to graduates of the specific programs that you're interested in. Most graduate and professional programs have an alumni network. Contact the school and ask to be put in touch with a recent graduate or graduates. Ask those graduates what they liked and also don't be afraid to ask about what they did not like about the program. Remember, no program is perfect, and you're trying to obtain as much information as you can in order to make an informed decision. What you're trying to do is focus on whether the program is the right one for you and your values. It's extremely important to speak to graduates so that you can ask questions that you have and also hear the perspectives of graduates that have been through the program successfully. Third, If you have the opportunity to speak to graduates of the schools you're considering, ask them if you could shadow them for a day or two in their new professions, such as law, medicine, accounting, engineering, research, or whatever it is that you're interested in. Don't be afraid to ask. If you're planning to apply to a program that leads to a licensed profession, then it's crucial that you take advantage of any opportunity to get a sneak peek of what your work life will be like after graduation from the program. For example, if you speak to a graduate of a law school and they're practicing litigation, ask if you can join them in office and in court one day just to observe. Ask them if you could have a tour of their office. You'll be surprised by how many lawyers, doctors, dentists, accountants, and other professionals will be willing to show you the ropes of what they do. You just need to ask. Finally, all of this information is valuable and can be considered when making your choices about which schools to apply to. Remember to think about the life that you want, the choices that you want, the freedom that you want, and practice a visualization exercise like the one in episode four to help give you clarity on what you want, not only in a program, but also in life. Don't be afraid to ask your questions. You will be spending lots of energy, time, and money at whichever school you choose to attend, so you are absolutely in a position to ask your questions. 
and it may be tough to figure out what your questions are. I get that. Look into the school, look through the course offerings, look through the faculty and their work, look at the location of the school, look through the partnerships that the schools have, look through the opportunities for student involvement, look through any student wellness or supports that are available to students. For example, when I was in law school, Osgood facilitated yoga classes every Wednesday, so each Wednesday throughout first year, I brought my yoga mat and I participated. It was a great way to get to know people outside of my section and outside of class, decompress from my morning class, and recharge before my next class. I made some really great friends in these yoga classes whom I otherwise would not have met. So, think about how you thrive. Think about your study strategies. Think about your time, your circumstance, your commute. What do you want? And can the school offer the opportunities that you're looking for? Undoubtedly, once you attend a day or two in a particular program, you will be able to formulate your thoughts and questions more cohesively and more clearly. And visualize, 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 visualize your days, weeks, months, both personally and professionally. How will you be spending your time? What resources will be available to you? Are research opportunities available to you? Does the school have clinics and experiential learning opportunities in which you can engage? Can you see yourself here at this school? By engaging in this process, you'll have some more clarity as to where you'd like to spend your time energy, and money, and what opportunities might be waiting for you on the other side. Thanks so much for joining me and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.